People tend to assume that oats specifically are really good for weight loss, but is the hype real? Today, I am talking about four studies to figure out how oats really affect our weight. And this video isn't just going to be about how much oats affect our weight, but we're also gonna talk about the crazy way in which it does affect our weight and the specific components of oats that might be responsible and what other foods might have those components. And lastly, whether it matters if you're eating a high fat diet or a high carb diet for how much oats will affect your weight. I wanted to give a big thank you to all of you who subscribed because we recently hit 4,000 subscribers. And I also wanted to give a huge thank you to all of you who donated to help me upgrade my ancient seven-year-old camera with this beauty. So your amazing donations paid for a huge chunk of this so that I'm not super totally embarrassingly in the red money-wise with this YouTube channel, given I like disable the ads that are disruptive and don't do sponsorships and do not treat this like a business at all. So thank you so much. If you wanna to help to get us over the finish line of the GoFundMe so that we can get audio equipment to start a podcast version of these episodes for you to listen on the go, then please head to the GoFundMe page. The link is up here and in the description below. And now back to the science. These four studies that I'm gonna talk about end up painting a really cool picture when considered together about how oats affect our weight. And I think it's pretty crazy personally. So stick around to the end if you wanna learn some pretty crazy oat facts. <laughs> And first, we are going to start with a quick and dirty cross-sectional study, which is looking at the correlation between oat eating and weight. So this is just a first pass to see if there's any relationships in the wild between oats and weight. And what these researchers found is that people who eat oats tend to be older, on average by about 10 years, and are more likely to be women, which is pretty unsurprising, I'd say. And these people who ate oats, on average, tended to weigh less, which is also not very surprising. But the crazy part is that even though people who ate oats almost certainly had lower total daily energy expenditure because they were women who need to eat less and older who need to eat less on average, these oat eaters still ate more calories on average than people who didn't eat oats. So people who ate oats both weighed less and had lower total daily energy expenditures, so lower calorie needs, a lower maintenance amount of calories they'd need to hit to start gaining weight, but still ate more calories and weighed less. So this is kind of a weird equation for standard diet science. We see people who need fewer calories, who eat more, and they weigh less. And what I think is the obvious possibility here is that people who eat oats are probably also exercising more as part of an overall healthier lifestyle, and that could lead to eating more calories while also weighing less, right? Well, no, actually, the people who ate oats did less vigorous exercise than the people who did not eat oats. And more importantly, the researchers controlled for physical activity, so how much they exercised, in these analyses looking at how weight relates to oats. So it does not seem to be the case that exercise is creating this huge discrepancy between calories in versus calories out and weight. So this is just a first fun clue that there might be something pretty weird going on with oats and weight. And the next clue on our little trail here comes from a rat study in which the researchers used a rat model of obesity. And as you may remember from one of my recent videos, the gold standard way to simulate human obesity in rats is to just let rats eat a high fat diet as much as they want. And they'll just keep eating until they're really overweight, just like humans. And for some rats, the researchers replaced part of their high fat diet with oats in differing amounts. So they would take out like hundred calories of the fatty stuff, let's say, and swap in 100 calories of oats. And they looked at the rat's food efficiency, as they called it, so the amount of weight that the rats gained as a function of how much they ate. And they found that when the rats were just eating a purely high-fat diet with no oats, they had really high food efficiency, so their food was very easily converted into fat, essentially. But they found that as the percentage of oats in the rat's diets increased, the rat's food efficiency went down, so they actually gained less weight per calorie when more of their diet was made up of oats. So this isn't just lower calorie density, eating less calories, it's actually that they gained less weight for the same amount of calories. For a real world example of this, let's say that you ate a high fat breakfast of eggs and sausages every morning that was about 500 calories. Well, this study suggests that if you replace those 500 calories of eggs and sausage, with 500 calories of oats, you would actually absorb less of those calories and lose weight or gain less weight, depending on what your current weight trajectory was. 
Now let's see what happens to weight when you give people oats versus fake oats in a gold standard type of study where we're actually using people, well, not using them, but you know what I mean, looking at people, paying people for their voluntary participation and double blinding, randomized control trial, getting rid of confounds, that kind of thing. And in this study, one of their goals was to figure out the specific component of oats that is causing weight loss potentially. And that component is beta glucans. This is a type of soluble fiber that's found not only in oats, but also in rye and sorghum and barley. And one thing with this study is it's not clear if they match the other type of cereal for overall fiber. So it's not clear if it's comparing beta glucans versus no fiber or beta glucans versus another type of fiber, which is unfortunate, but I feel like this study is still very interesting and useful, even if we don't get to know that specific detail. In this study, they gave participants either oats or fake oats for 12 weeks and looked at what happened. And over these 12 weeks, the researchers had the participants add 300 calories of oatmeal to their diets. They didn't change anything else about their diets. They were just asked to add oatmeal. And it was expected that they would replace some of their meals with oatmeal naturally in order to fit in these 300 calories of oatmeal. And they found that over these 12 weeks, the people who ate fake oats actually gained a little bit of weight, which is not surprising given that everyone on average, unfortunately, is gaining weight. So, you know, not surprising that people would continue to gain weight in this case. But they found that the people who were given oats lost three and a half pounds over six weeks and five pounds over 12 weeks. So they lost quite a bit of weight just from adding 300 calories of oats to their diet. And in fact, 90% of participants lost weight. So it seems like it really worked for almost everyone. And I don't know about you, but at this point in my research for this video, I started asking, well, will the effects get stronger if you add more oats? Like, will you lose more weight if you have 600 calories of oats versus 300 calories of oats? And that is what study four is going to answer for us. And this study is really cool, not only because they vary the amount of oats, but they also look at oat consumption within the context of a high carb, low fat diet, which is obviously relevant to a lot of you. And unfortunately though, one disclaimer with this study is that it is funded by big oats, <laughs> big Mongolian oats to be specific. I don't know why, but usually I wouldn't even include or talk about a study like this if it were funded in my videos, but this study's results are in line with all the other stuff we've talked about that has not been funded and other literature I didn't talk about. So, so because we know this effect seems to exist in other studies, it makes me less suspicious of this study. But more importantly, the results they find are not what big oats would probably want to see. So that made me think maybe we can believe it somewhat, but big grain of salt in terms of the amounts of weight lost and everything. And as a little aside, unfortunately, a huge chunk of nutrition studies are funded by the interested industries that are being studied because unfortunately the US government's funding for nutrition studies is utter crap and it's embarrassing for our country because we're all dying of diet related diseases but the government doesn't think that it's worth allocating more research funds for grant money for nutrition researchers so they have to go find private money. But anyways, little insider rant there. So in this study they looked at 300 overweight type two diabetic participants over the course of 30 days and looked at how four different diets affected their weight. So first they had a control diet, which was just continue eating your usual diet. Then they had a high carb, low fat diet that was 60% carbs, 22% fat and 18% protein. And then they had a diet that was high carb, low fat, but with 200 calories of oats replacing other cereals in their diet. And then the fourth diet was high carb, low fat plus 400 calories of oats, replacing other grains in the diet. And first for the results of the plain all high carb, low fat diet, if we were to go by calories in versus calories out or conventional wisdom, this group should have lost 1.3 pounds over the course of this month, just based on the number of calories they ate. But instead they actually lost 2.75 pounds. So here we see an extra magical 1.5 pounds of weight loss from the high carb, low fat diet that could not be explained by calories in versus calories out. If you've watched any of my other videos, you probably are well aware that this is a thing. If you're not aware that this is a thing, check out my other videos. I've got a playlist and yeah, there's a lot of stuff on this. And I want to add, this also cannot be explained by losing water weight or glycogen stores because unlike low carb diets, low fat diets actually increase your glycogen and yet they still increase your weight loss. So that's another pretty cool aspect. And now for the oat results, the group who ate 200 calories of oats 
as part of their high carb, low fat diet, lost 3.7 pounds over the course of this month. So just by swapping out 200 calories of non-oat grains with oats, people lost an extra pound on top of their high carb, low fat diet. And now for the last group, the people who ate 400 calories of oats as part of their high carb, low fat diet, they lost 3.8 pounds over the course of those 30 days. And the crazy part of this to me, and one of the big reasons that I don't think this study might've been a sole product of a big oats influence, is that eating 200 calories of oats seems to have a huge beneficial effect for weight loss, but doubling the amount of oats beyond that didn't really do anything. So if I were big oats funding the study and wanting to like incentivize the authors to find something that benefits me, then I would want to see that increasing the oats massively increases the weight loss because that'll massively increase my sales as big oats. So that's one reason I think we might be able to not totally throw away this study. So what we see here is that eating a high carb, low fat diet for a month seemed to cause an extra 1.5 pounds of weight loss beyond that which could be explained by calories in versus calories out. And even more than that, adding in 200 calories of oats or 400 calories of oats gave you an extra one pound of weight loss over that month just from eating some oats. Seems pretty easy to me. <laughs> and it seems like just eating 200 calories of oats does a lot and that eating 400 calories doesn't really do much more. Doesn't make anything worse, but doesn't seem to add much benefit. And so overall from these studies, it looks like if you're eating a high fat diet like the rats, then adding oats can really help you stop gaining weight from your really high fat diet. <laughs> and even if you're already eating a high carb, low fat diet, it looks like adding oats can still help you lose more weight super easily. And it seems like oats are doing this in part by decreasing your food efficiency. So decreasing the amount of calories you absorb or reducing de novo lipogenesis, which is converting carbohydrates into fat or through some other mechanism that we don't know yet, but there's a lot of possible ones that I've actually talked about in other videos on this channel. And so here again, just like so many of my other videos, we have found a diet slash lifestyle tweak that is super easy, doesn't require any restriction or suffering or sacrifice, but that can lead to pretty substantial weight loss. And with oats, they are cheap and super delicious. You can even make cookies out of them if you don't feel like eating a bowl of oatmeal and they might be able to help you lose weight. And if we were to go by study three in this video for the amount of weight people could lose by adding oats, it seems like people were losing about an extra half pound a month like for the lower end. So you might think, well, that's pretty small. But the idea with these lifestyle tweaks is that it's very easy to stack them to the point where you can see really substantial weight loss without having to really change anything noticeable about your life in any negative way. So for example, if we were to combine a bunch of the results we've seen from studies lately over the course of my videos here, then you could potentially lose a lot of weight just from having a bowl of cooked and cooled oatmeal Here's a video on why the cooling might be important with a pile of blueberries on top. Here's a video for that. And then go for some super ridiculously easy exercise after that. And you could find yourself losing huge amounts of weight, like as much as your sad dieting friend <laughs> might be losing. And the major win-win about these kinds of lifestyle tweaks is that they also help you live longer. So these are all healthy things that are good for you, will help you not get cancer, will help you not get fat. <laughs> it's really no downsides to eating anthocyanins and fiber and stuff. So hopefully this can give you some hope that losing weight does not have to be a struggle. It does not have to be unhealthy. You don't have to regret your crash dieting years when you're 50 years old and super unhealthy. Instead, you can be skinny now and healthy later. And that's kind of my whole lifestyle these days. <laughs> I've literally never had such an easy time maintaining a low weight in my entire life. And my focus now is just 90% on being healthy. And so I, do these kinds of tweaks I tell you about, like eating bucket loads of anthocyanins because I want to be healthy. And then bonus, it's really easy to stay skinny. So yeah, highly recommend science-based healthy eating for easy weight loss. I hope you found these studies as cool as I did. And I hope you consider adding oats to your diet if you don't already eat them because they're super healthy, super cheap, and will probably help you lose weight. And again, if you want to help me turn these episodes into a podcast so you can listen on the go and make things more convenient, please head on over to my GoFundMe so I can get some nice audio equipment so I don't sound like crap. Of course, this camera is already doing a lot, but I still feel like this is not podcast level audio yet, especially in this high reverb room that I, it's my only good filming room with lighting. So 
And please like and share to help get this information out there so other people can experience the wonders of oats. <laughs> and please subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.